I'm a big Wii fan. I've been playing this thing since I was a little kid, and it's the first console I ever modded. Homebrew and hacking on the Wii has its own dedicated video, so today I'm focusing more on the Wii physically. It's a nice small package, and a nice sleek improvement over the GameCube for sure, but it deserves better than the body it was given. The Wii can be improved. And if you think that I'm going to give it the GameCube mini treatment, just like I've done before with a nice compact redesign, nope, think again. We need to think bigger this time. The Nintendo Wii is a console of the gods, and it deserves a godlike stature. I am going to do what nobody else has done before in the history of the Nintendo Wii. I am embarking on a journey to make it large. So it was off to Lowe's to find something I could use as a suitable baseboard to build the Mega Wii out of. The plan is going to be to 3D print most of it, but for the two broad faces, I want to have one seamless panel, which neither of my 3D printers can handle. I was hoping to find a polycarbonate or ABS sheet of plastic around 3 16 of an inch or 5 millimeters thick, but they didn't really have anything like that. The closest I can find is this weird 2 millimeter thin plastic sheet, but it wouldn't be nearly strong enough for this project. I thought about using some kind of 3D printed skeleton type thing to strengthen it up, but eventually I just decided on this 1 8 of an inch thick or 3 millimeters thick whiteboard panel instead. This will be fairly easy to cut too, since it's made of this MDF wood type material and all I have access to right now are hand tools. Okay, we're brainstorming how I'm gonna make this thing enormous. I'm not sure what scale I wanna go with or if I wanna go with any kind of particular scale at all, really. But one thing I was thinking about is the fan that's in there. And if I'm gonna be putting a cooling fan in mine, I'm going to need a fan. It's probably gonna be a computer fan. So that gives me like 80 millimeter, 90 millimeter, or 92 or whatever the heck, 120, 140 millimeter. Um, that's gonna be my options for a fan. And I'm looking at the rest of this and everything else I'm gonna end up custom making pretty much. So there's nothing else other than the fan that I can't really control the size of. Cause I can make like these cutouts whatever size I want. There's no like big format of DVD I can use in place of a regular DVD. So yeah, I'm gonna custom make everything else. Uh, the fan is the one thing I'm not custom making. So I think I'm gonna scale everything around the fan. So let's take a look at the options. Here's the set of fans I just have lying around at this particular moment. So we have an 80, I think this is a 92, and then I believe it's a 120 and a 140. And I know there are bigger fans as well, like 200 mil fans and all that, but that's like, that's huge. I don't think I'd wanna scale one up that much. Unless. No, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Unless, no, for real though, that's way too big. So what I'm gonna try and do then is mock up in CAD the size of a regular Wii, and then the scale that I'd have to make it go to to use each of these different fans and then kind of look at the dimensions and go from there. Okay, I think this really puts it into perspective. So here's the original. Here's an 80 millimeter fan, 92 and 120. And I stopped there because it's already huge. Just so this project doesn't get too out of hand and I still need to fit within the limitations of my 3D printers, I'm going with the 80 millimeter. It's still like absolutely gigantic compared to the regular Wii. If I had better means, I would make an absolutely off the walls one, but um, I think for now we're gonna go with just the 80. But now that I've decided on the scale that I wanna use, I can go ahead and just click two different points on here and it will be able to measure the distance between those two points. The depth of this thing scaled up is 456 millimeters. And now I can just go ahead and mark that out on my whiteboard and get cutting. Now that I have my baseboard cut out, I'm gonna start catting some stuff. And when I say stuff, I mean all the stuff that's gonna make it so this still works like an actual Wii. I haven't decided yet, but I may orient the Wii toward the front there. This is where the faceplate will be and you might still be able to put discs in. It was just an idea. I don't know if I'm gonna go that direction, but that'd be kind of cool if I can keep that functionality because everything else I can extend. I can get GameCube controller plugs that plug into each of the GameCube controller ports and then they'll route out to the top. That's not hard. Getting USB ports that route this way, that's not hard at all. I'll be able to fit the AC adapter inside of the housing probably uh, and like an HDMI adapter. I'll be able to do that as well. They only come out to like right here. Um, so all of that is very doable. The button's very doable, SD card doable. DVD, that's the one thing that I'm not sure about. I don't wanna have to modify the console at all. I want you to be able to open this thing up, stick a Wii in here, plug everything in, and then you're good to go. 
finally getting somewhere with 3D printing some of these parts. So this one's gonna line up near the front here and it's gonna hold the entire front plate in place. You've got all these different holes here because I'm gonna glue this thing down. Uh, some of the glue is gonna spill through the holes and it's just gonna make it grab the piece a little bit better. Uh, these holes here are for brass inserts, which you can see. I've already put in place. Brass inserts are really cool. If you don't know what these are, they're kind of just like threads that you can put wherever you want, which you can fit like a, uh, I think these ones are good for an M3 screw into. And they've got this knurling on the outside where you can heat them up and then press them into plastic parts like 3D printed stuff, for example. And then they'll melt their way through the plastic and then bite into it. And then you've got a thread that's set in place. Like, see, I can thread this guy right in there. And then you don't have to worry about trying to make threads out of plastic which are not gonna last at all. These things work really good. I've used them on quite a few projects now and I'm a big fan. But that's how we're gonna hold the front plate in place. This is gonna be the SD card slot. I've just cut out just this part for testing right now. And then it's got these four holes right here. And then what I'm gonna do is screw this into this bracket, line it up properly, and then we'll glue this piece down and it'll be set in place. Here's the test piece for the face plate. This is enormous dude so I had to print it in two parts because even my bigger printer my CR 10 over there unfortunately it's still no match for the absolute girth of this boy it is split in two right down the middle well, not down the middle a little bit uh, lopsided but you know it is kind of unfortunate they're just joined with hot glue for now I don't know if this is gonna be the final piece Obviously, I would like paint it to make it white, but this was just a test print to see how it's going to fit. And it came out okay. It's not great. Some scummy lines there. Uh, you can't even really pick it up on camera, but the whole thing, all the corners lifted, which kind of sucks. I don't know, it's not bad. If I had to like fill this a little bit and then spray paint it, um, I don't know, I wouldn't be too mad, but it is a little, a little scummy of a print, so I don't know. But anyway, there's the board. So the idea there is that we've got it screwed into the bracket here. And then you can see there's just a little bit of a height difference between these two pieces. And that height difference is because the board will fill it in. So now the white piece sits on top of the board and the faceplate sits flush with it. And I've even got these little buttons 3D printed. These are gonna be like the power buttons, reset buttons and eject buttons. And they go in through the back, just like this. And now you got yourself a power button. And then there's a spot to put nuts on either side of these brackets here. Nut will get held in on one side, screw goes in on the other side. Oh no. Um, okay, issue. Well, um, okay, so we'll come back to that one. But the eject button, on the other hand, should not have this problem. And the next thing you know, you got yourself a button. It's a little bit stiff right now, but nothing a little sanding and or grease won't fix. I've got the SD card flap screwed in place now. Uh, this works pretty good. There's a tiny little lip here. It opens a tiny bit. And then from there, you can kind of dig your fingernails in and really get it open. And there you go. It doesn't quite open up as much or at the same angle as the Wii. It just needs to open up enough to put an SD card in. That's all that this is gonna be for. There's more than enough room for that, so I'm calling it good. Um, but yeah, I gotta make the lip a little bit bigger on this. It's kind of hard to grab right now. And as for the issue with the screw clearance on the power button, I was able to drumble away enough material to slot the screw in here from the top instead. So if you put the screw through the button first, and then kind of place it. It just barely works. You can just barely finagle it in there. And then you're good. Push the screw through. Perfect. Wow, this sucks, but I think it's working. No, this works. It just sucks really bad. It doesn't suck enough for me to want to make it better though. I would say I'll only have to do this once, but I'm sure I'm gonna have to disassemble this thing a billion times. Yes, sir, that's a button with like the world's tiniest travel. Oh, there we go. It was just caught. Amazon came. So we've got one, two, three, four GameCube controller extension cables. This one looks like it might have kind of a screwy pin, but these are so that we can take the top of the Wii, plug in our GameCube controller cables, and then route these to about this general area here. This would be the top of the Wii. 
a little more cable on here than I wanted, but is what it is. So we can still plug in real GameCube controllers, that'll be cool. And we've got this little guy. This is just a receptacle for an AC plug. And I'm gonna use this so I can internalize the AC adapter, so I don't need to hang a brick off the end. Plus, if I've got the Wii mounted toward the front to make it so you can still put DVDs in, and I wanna still be able to plug power in, I'd have to then mount it toward the back, and I can't do both. And I could pull that port off of a dead Wii motherboard or something, uh, and then make my own little extension, but I, I want the power brick to be internal, so we're gonna do that. And that leads me to this guy. This is going to get cut and then wired to the AC receptacle that I just showed you guys. And then this is gonna get mounted to the back so you can just plug the entire thing in with a standard figure eight cable. And this is exactly what it says, SD extender. And that'll be cool because then we can plug that right in there. And then this end will get routed toward the front under the uh, SD card flap. And the final package. So this is an AV thing for boats or something. It gives you this pretty neat panel thing. Two USB connections and a HDMI connection on it. And then it just terminates in exactly the same thing, but cable form. Am I thinking with this that I'm gonna run the big old block end here right out to the back. And then all of these cables are gonna just plug right into the back of the Wii. But the Wii doesn't have HDMI, which is where this guy comes in. This is just one of those cheap, like $8 Wii HDMI adapters you can find on Amazon. It'll be more than good enough for what we're doing here. And that just goes right in the back. And then we'll be able to plug our USBs in there. HDMI right in there. It's gonna be a great time. But I was thinking about our fan here. We're gonna have to power this somehow. And I could tap into the Wii's AC adapter, or I could tap into this cable that we're gonna be running to power the fan. And that's not a horrible idea, because I could just wire it up to one of these USB power bricks or whatever, and then just get voltage for the fan that way. But I mean, we've got a perfectly good five volt source right here. So my thinking is that if this fan is willing to power itself at five volts, I can just tap into one of the USB ports and then get power that way. And that's better than using the AC with a power brick or the Wii's power adapter because those would be giving constant voltage uh, despite if the Wii's on or not. So if the whole thing was plugged in, it would make the fan spin and I don't really want that. It's just a waste of power. But if I tap into the USB port on the Wii, it will only go when the Wii is turned on. So I need to check two things then. One, does the Wii actually give five volts to the USB ports when it powers on? And two, will this guy spin up at five volts? You can see here, connected to my variable power supply, set to five volts, fan is spinning just fine. And now we'll just quickly check to see if we're getting five volts on boot up. Looks like five volts to me. I could get a USB extension cable and cut it in half, then split off the five volt and ground lines into a fan header to get this fan spinning, but I think a giant Wii deserves something a little cleaner than that. I did find some USB fan header adapters, but none of these are gonna pass through a female USB port, and I wanna still use both ports for data. So faced with this dilemma, I figured out how to use Altium Designer and made myself a PCB that does just that. And creating my own PCB has been something that I've wanted to do for a really long time, and something this simple seemed like a pretty good excuse to try it out finally. Designing the PCB took me a super long time to figure out since I've never done anything like this before, but getting it manufactured was a breeze thanks to PCB way. I'll admit, I didn't get everything right on my first submission to them. My board was electrically correct, but for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what kind of Gerber file I needed, or if I included the drill file correctly, or if I exported all the layers correctly, or if everything was in the proper CNC format. Man, screw all this stuff. I just wanted a PCB. PCBWay makes sure that you don't have to waste any of your time or money on dumb stuff like that because throughout my entire order, a real PCBWay employee would let me know just what was wrong with my submission each time that I screwed something up. They actually wanted to make sure that I didn't get left with an incorrectly manufactured part. This level of customer service was crucial to making my first PCB happen because I, I honestly have no idea what I'm doing with this kind of stuff. There's no way I could have gotten to a finished product like this without their help. I got mine done in this really nice white solder mask, but they have all kinds of colors to choose from as well. They primarily do PCB work, but they also provide 3D printing and even CNC machining services. And say you don't know the first thing about designing your own stuff. That's fine too. They have an entire community section on here where hobbyists can upload their own projects and you can order the parts for them directly from PCBWay. And if you're a new user to PCBWay, you can sign up now and get $5 off your first order. All right, got the old built Ford Tough flash drive here. This goes here. All right, and that's the full dingle dongle right there. Let's see if it works. Okay, fan is spinning. We'll load up USB loader here to see if it recognizes the flash drive. And there it is. 
I think if I was using a USB hard drive rather than a flash drive, this wouldn't work because the fan would steal too many amps from the mechanical drive. And I could test it, but either way, flash drives are so cheap for 64, 128 gigs at this point that anything that I'm realistically gonna wanna play on the Wii will fit on a flash drive nowadays. So this will do great. I'm glad that my PCB worked because that was the first PCB that I've ever made. Okay, so all the electronics have been figured out. All that's left to do is print the various 3D printed parts that are gonna be going inside, as well as the outer perimeter. Bean is being very helpful as my chief visualization officer. I've kind of changed my mind about the whole uh, GameCube cable extension thing. For one, these things are absolutely disgusting and super poorly built, and the pins are just flying out of the socket. And I don't think they're gonna be a good solution. So instead, we're gonna do it like this. So this is the entire top panel. It's just gonna go right there. And so instead of putting the memory card ports here and all the GameCube ports lined up along the top, doing it this way is going to be a billion times simpler. And now there's just one port to access all of the GameCube related stuff. And then I've got this cover. It's just gonna go right there as well, but it needs to get sanded down. It's not quite fitting right. Okay, now the port cover is going in and out just fine. There's still a good bit of friction in there, but it needs to have at least some amount of friction to stay in, so. And the more I open and close it, the easier it'll be. All right, the back is complete. Had to print this one on the CR-10 because it's a large lad. But this is gonna go around the back for the Wii. It's also going to house the cooling fan. Slots in just like that. And then I'll be able to screw down the corners of this bracket. Uh, and then power cable is gonna go right there. And then the IO is gonna go right there. Let me go ahead and put those in. So here's the rear with all the doodads installed. Got the exhaust fan on the back here, USB and HDMI IO, the AC plug, here's the other side. So the AC plug right now is just coming out into this tiny little extension cable. Uh, I'm gonna be cutting this next and then soldering it to a regular household plug. And then there's the fan held in by a couple brackets there. I had to do it this way, I couldn't just screw it right into the back because the holes of the fan just barely don't line up correctly, so there would have been no way to mount it with those holes. But this way works fine. And then the IO obviously just terminates in these cables. And you'll notice there's no plug for the sensor bar, and that's because fuck the sensor bar. I'm just gonna end up using a wireless sensor bar because there's no point in me having to chop up that proprietary plug off of a Wii motherboard just to throw it on there, when half the time all you're gonna do is play GameCube games on this thing anyway, so. If this burns down my apartment, I'll do a giveaway for it. Okay, well that heat shrink didn't shrink down like nearly as much as I was hoping it would, but I guess it's better than leaving exposed 120 volt AC. And, uh, that'll do. Okay, this is gonna be the first test with everything electrically connected. So we've got a figure eight AC cable uh, plugged in somewhere in the abyss. And that's plugged in to our AC receiver, which is then plugged into the Wii's AC adapter and then into the Wii. Then we've got the USB power tap going to the fan and then also going to the IO right there along with the bottom USB port also going to the I.O. The Wii HDMI adapter is connected and then that is also going to the I.O. We've got a flash drive plugged in for games and then the HDMI cable is connected here and then over to this monitor. All right, let's give it a shot. Nice, let's go. I'm so excited, it's coming together. And sometimes things didn't line up with what I had already printed and needed rapid modification. Eh, we still got most of the disc. I've just finished this holder piece that will let you slot in the AC adapter. It's just held in by a Velcro strap, just like the console. And now you got something to mount this to. Now that I'm happy with all the perimeter pieces so far, the back corner is gonna have to get chopped off. Uh-oh, stupid moment. On the original red prototype faceplate, these brackets that hold in the power and reset buttons are baked into the faceplate. These are just part of the model. Um, but when I exported the faceplate again to do it in white for the final one, I forgot to include the little bits that make up the bracket to hold the buttons. So I have printed them separately and I'm gonna attempt to glue them onto the front and hopefully they still work okay. Yeah, that seems to work all right. Yeah, I guess I can just glue it in. It's better than reprinting the entire faceplate. Party in the front. 
Filthy in the back. Just how I like it. All right, the front faceplate is done in white. She's got bigger panel gaps than a Tesla. But this whole top part of the front bezel is so ridiculously large, at least for the bamboo printer. And I know that this printer isn't gonna do well enough to print it even better, so. Unfortunately, the project's gotta be done eventually, so sacrifices are gonna be made. Other than that, oh man, I'm loving this thing. Power button's good to go, reset button's good to go, eject button, good to go. And let me show you guys this. So you open the SD card slot, and you've actually got a place to mount your SD card. See, look at that. Freaking awesome. The power and reset buttons do contact the actual power and reset buttons, which is cool. Reset feels better than power for sure, but they both work. And unfortunately, eject is uh, just a dummy button. It moves, but it's not connected to anything on the other side. And the reason it's not connected is because I'd have to make some crazy linkage to go from the eject button on the Wii to the eject button over here. It could be done, but again, project's gotta be done at some point. I've spent long enough on this. At this point, there's just finishing touches left to do. I made my way over to the store to grab some paint to paint the sides of the whiteboard white, and then I got some gray as well to paint on the graphics that you see on the front and the side of the Wii. Also, found this Donkey Kong poster, and when I see that ape, I buy that ape, so I own this now. I'm gonna use these 3D printed stencils here for the graphics, and painting these on is uh, actually a horrible idea because it's coming out extremely blobby and nasty, and it just looks terrible every time I try it. Luckily, you can just wipe it off with a paper towel before it dries, but on the 3D printed parts, I wouldn't be so lucky because it seeps into the individual lines like you can see here. So I'm not gonna attempt to paint on the faceplate either. Ideally, I could just get these graphics vinyl cut, but I don't really have access to a vinyl cutter right now. And either way, if I decide I do wanna do that, I can just put them on down the line, so I'm gonna leave it as is for now. The brown sides of the whiteboard got painted so it blends in with the whole thing better. And now I'm gonna glue on these little feet that I printed in white TPU so the bottom panel doesn't get all scratched up. Plus the original Wii also has these. On goes the black blocker piece for the DVD slot and, well, it's finished. This is the Bringus Studios Wii XL, or Wii Mega, or Wii Max, whatever you wanna call it. It's a project that I've dreamed of making ever since, uh, well, I, like a month ago, I guess. But for that last month, I've poured my blood, sweat, and hot glue into this thing like you'd never believe. It's approximately a 2.3 to 1 scale model of the Wii, and 12 times larger by volume. Since there's a regular Wii inside of it, you can do everything a Wii can with this thing. That includes reading game discs, plugging in GameCube controllers and memory cards, and using USB devices. Every button of the Wii is accessible from the front panel. Power and reset are their own buttons that go right to the actual buttons on the Wii. And by flipping down the SD card door, you can have access to the SD card as well as the eject button. Admittedly, access to the sync button was a bit of an afterthought, and the best way to get to it is to just poke it from the DVD slot. To keep things simple, there's no sensor bar port, a wireless battery powered sensor bar can be used instead. Inside, there's a Wii HDMI adapter that can scale the Wii all the way up to 1080p for use on modern displays. Sorry, no CRT compatibility here. There's an exhaust fan that's the same 2.3 to 1 scale as the Wii's exhaust fan. I completely did not plan the whole project around that or anything, it just happened to work out. What a crazy coincidence. The fan is powered by this USB power tap that I designed so that it comes on whenever the Wii is powered on and it turns off whenever the Wii is powered off. The power supply has been moved to the inside of the Wii because, well, there's so much empty space in here, there's no reason not to. The power supply connects with a female 120 volt household plug to a female figure 8 port that's on the outside of the Wii. And my favorite part about this project for sure is how modular this whole thing is. Almost every single part of this thing can be removed and replaced. I try to design everything I make in this way because for me, modeling and 3D printing is a very iterative process, and I know that I'm going to have to make changes to something down the line. It's a lot better to have to undo six or eight screws than to have to unhot glue something. I also tried my best to show the fewest screws on the outside of this thing. That's why you're only going to see four on the entire console which are all in the rear to hold the lid in place. I used a similar design philosophy when I built my GameCube Mini V2, which uses visible screws very minimally as well, but not quite to the extent that the Wii XL here does it. 
There are some areas of this thing that I'm not so proud of, such as this panel gap in the front caused by the faceplate lifting up during printing. But again, since this thing is so modular, there's nothing stopping me from having one made later on by PCBWay or like another 3D printer service who can handle printing such a large piece without any issues. Eventually, I'd also like to get the graphics for the Wii logo and power and eject and all that vinyl cut to make it look more like the original. Also, some of the whites don't entirely match up between the whiteboard and the shell, which unfortunately there's really nothing I can do about without spray painting this entire thing. I'm just not set up for it right now. Plus, I hate the feel and the smell of spray painted things, and it would just gunk up how well the buttons work right now. And so, nope, I'm okay with the mismatch. Guess what? I launched a second channel, and there's already a video posted to it where I create a 3D printed catapult for my cat to play with. It's the same unhinged Bringus Studios content that you love, but not gaming related. Check out my two GameCube mini builds on this channel if you want to see more stuff like this, and get subscribed to both John Bringus and Bringus Studios. And if you want to see more Wii content coming very soon, that's going to be on Bringus Studios. Join the Discord if you want to discuss computers, gaming, or modding with other like-minded folks. My Patreon is in the description as well if you want to directly support the creation of future videos. Also, the files for this project are going to be in the description if you're crazy enough and want to actually try building this thing for yourself. I will see you in the next one.